Hey guys, I know I haven't done an update in a while, but uh, I figured now that the weather's nicer, some projects are probably going to start happening. Um, this is one of them that I'm working on, so I figured I'd do a quick video for you guys. Uh, this is a this is a lithium battery pack out of a Chevy Volt. This is the, the first generation, so it's about, uh, I'd say about 10 usable kilowatts is uh, according to the data sheet from what I've seen. Um, this isn't the entire pack. I have a, I have a, two, a 48, two 48 volt sections that size with those two pieces there. Um, on a trickle charger right now. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I haven't had a chance to do much with these because I just picked them up. You can kind of see uh, the BMS situation here. I just popped the cap off here because I was uh, trying to get some voltage readings and uh, disconnect the bus bar to lower the voltage because this pack here is all wired up in series to bring up a high voltage. So um, yeah, so you can see there was a bus bar right on here. And uh, so now this is a 48 volt section. And this is kind of more or less a 24 volt section. So I just kind of wanted to pop the uh, caps off to take a look at what the voltage readings are. I was told this pack came from a junkyard. So I was told uh, the car was in an accident in January. And I feel like the cells are kind of on the, the lower side of a charge and could use a, some power put back into them. So I just put this little meter here to kind of check it. And you can see that's about as low as I want to go. 3.57 on these, these Gen 1 cells. So... We'll, uh, we'll see. I'm going to try and put a charge back into them. This here from here to here uh, measures 43 volts even. So I think I'm going to lower this. The, the, the deepest I'll discharge it is probably somewhere around 41, 42 volts. I'll have to figure it out. Um, and then 48 volts would be a total of 4 volts per cell. So this, this needs a little bit of a charge put in. It's been sitting, uh, sitting for a while. Here's the bus bar here that, uh, that connects the pack. This is actually... Well, maybe this is from the other pack, but anyhow, you see the idea. This is where it connects here, the, the two the two battery, separate battery packs. My batteries are doing okay that I have now, but I'm going to need uh, to upgrade soon. And then we have uh, another project going on with an off-grid property that we're going to need some power for. So we might be able to use some of these, I think, maybe keep half of these at the house and take half up to the property if, uh, if things work out for us. So just something to play with. Um, yeah, there's the BMS uh, module that I don't need. There's a balance connector, which I may end up reusing uh, just as a a monitor. I don't I don't think I'm going to put a BMS per se on this, this system. I'm going to just monitor the cells and see how it goes. If something goes funny on one of the cells based on what I'm monitoring, then, then I might look into it. But I'm going to wire this entire pack up as a 48-volt setup and uh, just see how it goes and keep an eye on it. So anyways, I'll take you outside quick and we'll look at the other ones that I'm sort of trickle charging. It's a totally garbage day. You can see there's there's no sun. It's actually raining. I have a, a small temporary setup over here with two solar panels. These are two 230 watt sharp solar panels. They're wired in series. Um, this is just sitting here for now just to get a charge into the uh, into the uh, batteries a little bit. I just put some some baggies on here because it's kind of actually spinning and raining a bit. But anyways, it's just running in on some thin cable, which is actually good that it's cloudy because I don't think this cable is really rated for a whole lot. This is that Noma garden lighting cables. I know it looks thick on the outside, but if you look in the air at the uh, charge controller, that's not a very heavy gauge wire, but that's fine if it's uh, only a couple of amps, like a cloudy day like it is. Not getting a lot of power, but anyways, so here's the uh, the other section. So there's two 48 volt packs. You can kind of see I've, I've got the lid off here. So I removed the bus bar from here to here because these were these were wired all the way in series with the bus bar to give me it was 80 86 volts. So yeah, 43 on each pack. So I know you guys are going to give me shit. These should be technically the same size, but it's not going to stay like this. So I removed uh, I removed the bus bar connected the two up and uh, I think what I'll do is I'm going to keep these lids because it's good to cover the cells for protection I think I'll take my my die grinder here and I'll just I'll just notch out this one section and uh, and then pop the cap back on but just for now I want to get some some energy put back in it so I just use a an old crappy extension cord and this is the outback it started out as 43 volts even there you can see the uh, the input voltage is 57, and my batteries are now at 44.3, 44.2. We're getting uh, 80 watts, so we're trickle charging at not quite two amps going into the battery, which is good. I had a little bit of power going into it yesterday. I think I had about a 
well not a kilowatt but it went up one volt it went from 43 to 44 and uh, it was 44.1 when I shut shut it off last night and then this morning when I came back out it was still 44.1 so the charge a little bit of charge that got into it yesterday stayed in the batteries which is which is a good sign so hopefully hopefully there's some good usable energy in here this this section right here uh, it's two different packs like I said it's two kilowatts each so there's four kilowatts sitting here from what I've seen and from people I've been talking to four volts would be the maximum per cell um, so what I've done is I've ordered a, a Victron power monitor and then I can discharge this pack uh, let's say maybe to 1.5 uh, kilowatts usage out of each one maybe not totally discharge it so I can you know hopefully make these last as long as I can then I'll be able to see what the voltage is on each cell as my cutoff point so this being four I'll only use maybe three or 3.75 kilowatts out of this pack to to make it last as long as possible and uh, and that'll be good for for a lot of storage and energy hopefully for a couple of years so we'll have to see this is out of a 2013 Chevy Volt um, I asked them what the mileage was on the car they they didn't remember what it was so who knows it could have been high it could have been low so we'll see what we got the price was uh, was really good on it so yeah I'm sure if there's some usable kilowatts in here I, I made out okay if not at the end of the day it's a it's a good core against another one if if this is just a one to play around with and learn on and then maybe get a, a newer model but I have good good feeling about this because it's definitely holding some uh, some power so there we go we're gonna let this charge up for most of the day we're not going to see any sun so hopefully we can get this up to about 45 volts by the end of the day and slowly get ourselves up to up to 48. This is the Outback it's uh I've got the the max float set to what is it go over here and 48 volts so I've limited the charge controller I can actually uh I can lower that a little more well, I guess I can leave it. it. Doesn't matter. I had this down to five amps yesterday, only because I'm using, I don't know what it is, like 14 gauge extension cord here. It's not, it's not heavy, but I'm not, not putting a lot of current through it. I just want to get some kind of a charge in here, and then I've set my absorb and float to 48, and uh, and that's it. I want to make sure that the uh, equalization is the same. Yeah. Okay. So we can't accidentally equalize this thing to a high voltage and burn the place to the ground but anyways I'll uh, I'll try to do some more videos and keep you guys updated on how this project goes and how these batteries turn out talk to you later thanks